Good morning. You can do better than that. Good morning, Atlanta. Ah, much better. It's definitely a pleasure to be here this morning and to talk about Office 365 Groups to provide you an overview and roadmap. So first of all, thank you for attending the session. I know uh, it's a lot of walking between the buildings. I know we're competing with a lot of great sessions. So again, thank you uh, for being here today. My name is Christoph, and today alongside with Amit, we'll be giving you that overview. It's, it's particularly exciting for me to be here on stage, not only because I spent a number of years in Georgia, I went to school and worked here, but secondly, because we get to talk about one of our favorite topics, which is Office 365 Groups. So the agenda that we've got for today for the next 75 minutes is really three part. The first thing we're going to do is give you an overview. You know, we've been at the booth yesterday and before. A lot of people still don't know how is this going to help me with collaboration? How is this going to help my research and development department? How is that going to help my sales team be more agile, et cetera, et cetera? So we'll be doing a lot of, lots of demos and really hopefully make, making this real based on the millions of customers that are using groups day in, day out. The second section is all going to be about you. I know a lot of you are IT administrators and we've been listening to you guys. Not only group is great for our collaboration, but how do we make this a great entities to manage, to govern, to abide by whatever policies you get at your organization, large and small. And then being Ignite, last but not least, we'll definitely talk about roadmap of what's cooking in the Redmond kitchen uh, around Office 365 groups. Now one disclaimer I want to do right up front is, you know, this is a 200 level session. There are 14 groups related sessions at Ignite this week. So we're not going to do PowerShell demonstration. We're not going to do e-discovery. We're not going to do some advanced uh, distribution list migrations, but what we'll do instead is we'll plug in sessions that will go deeper into those respective topics. So you'll see me and Amit plugging in some of those sessions. So definitely take notes and hopefully if those aren't on your agenda, you can then potentially prioritize that. So enough introduction. Let's start with the presentation. And the first section typically with any presentation is why are you here? Why are we here? What are we trying to do with Office 365 groups? Now, two of our colleagues gave a presentation at 9 o'clock that talk about this topic in, in, uh, for 75 minutes. But I'll give you the elevator pitch in a couple minutes. And the point is, hopefully you can all relate to that, but how we collaborate has changed quite a bit. And it's funny, last night I was having a sleepless night because I was so excited. And I was thinking, you know, my first job was actually, I started in Atlanta. And I remember a couple years ago when I started straight out of Georgia Tech, you know, I was given a computer, I was working for a consulting firm, and back then, this thing called internet was the fashion in our consumer life. And at that company I was in, I needed VP approval to justify having internet explorer on my machine to justify the business case. So it just shows you, like, things have changed quite a bit that hopefully now we don't need to justify that tool. The other point that we get on the stats, like now we need to collaborate more than ever. It doesn't matter if you're in IT, it doesn't matter if you're in HR, in sales, you're going to need someone from the other side of the fence, from another business unit, to help you close a deal, to write beautiful specs, et cetera, et cetera. That leads us to the next slide, again on this why. Well, how about if I put my head in the sand? How about if I wait another ignite and pretend nothing is changing in the world? What's the cost of that? And that's what this tries to illustrate. I'm not going to go with all the stats of what's happening in the workplace. Again, you hopefully can relate to that, but not adopting how your workers, how your employees, how your colleagues collaborate has some real implication. Potentially you can fall off your pedestal, whatever industries, sizes, region you are, you can lose your edge. Not collaborating might impact quality. You might, you might be missing some valuable customer feedback and some feature requests or changes in habits and potentially uh, a competitor out of nowhere can suddenly eat your market share, et cetera, et cetera. And that leads into we don't think one size fits all for collaboration. And I'll be giving examples in the next slide, but basically here's our worldview of, of collaboration with Office 365. Notice the tagline, Office 365 gives you a complete group collaboration solution. The talk that we're doing today, it's not about individual productivity. We respect that. Obviously, we got an awesome suite of offerings with OneNote, with OneDrive for Business, et cetera, et cetera. This is all about a team coming together and getting work done, whether it's on a project, whether it's an organization, whether it's a community of interest. 
Now, what the bubble illustrates on that slide is a team throughout the day might have different key activities. Yes, a team might still be sending emails and scheduling things. That's OK. Yes, a team might be working on content, discovering content, co offering content, whatever it is. Yes, a team might have ad hoc or scheduled meeting, a sprint, a quarterly this, a monthly that. And that meeting should, be,、uh, should encompass the diversity of your workforce. If a m e t s working remotely, you shouldn't have to go in the office to be privy of the discussion that's happening. You should be able to dial in from wherever it is, whatever form factor, and listen to this important meeting that we're having. And last but not least, the last bubble is we also see in the workplace this notion of group collaboration that there are definitely very strong use cases to connect across the organization. What do we mean by that? Is potentially, you know, think of a community of interest、uh, or something you want to share outside of your immediate team. You know, you're launching a product, you're You're reaching out for experts and specialists, and that's what we mean by the last bubble. Now, some of the products that line up with that, you'll think of the first one Outlook, second one Office and SharePoint, Colon Media obviously is Skype for Business, and the last one is, is Yammer. Okay, one thing I want to pause is it's okay to go from one to the other. Some team might use three or four bubbles to get work done, some team might just use one, and that's okay. But again, the point is, We don't think one size fits all for group collaboration. Now, the other thing I want to mention, which is at the bottom of this slide, is all those different activities that a team might do throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the month to get work done is sitting on a common fabric. That common fabric is made up of three things Office 365 groups, Office Graph, and it's all secure. We're obviously going to spend a lot of time on the first one, which is Office 365 groups. But think of Office 365 groups as that magic ingredient that helps you to move from one activity to another, to go from maybe scheduling a meeting or sending a beautiful crafted email about a new recruit or about a key milestone from the team to potentially moving to a meeting that you're having with all your peers. Obviously, the graph, it's all about intelligence and how do we help you discover content, teams, people, things that are relevant to you that your peers are working on. And obviously, trusted, you know, the idea is with Office 365, you get a single identity, a single identity for the individuals in your company, but also back to what I was saying, a single identity for that team, that group of people. And we think that's a real differentiator compared to point solutions that are available day in, day out. So, with that, enough of the theory. Let me hand it over to Amit to talk about some of the key scenarios. Thank you, Christoph. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Talking to this audience about Office 365 groups, which is so near to our heart.、Uh, I'm from the development team who's building this solution. We've been on a journey for the last two years since we lost,、uh, first launched groups in the service. Today, millions of users are using groups. The landscape has changed. The change is coming in. The groups are used now in enterprise, commercials, education institutions. Small businesses, large enterprises, not just US, but globally. Today, groups are used in many different use cases. What we have observed is what's common as a scenario. There are three things that pop s out as the key scenarios across these organizations. These three scenarios have unique attributes. And today, we're going to show you how you can use right group capabilities. In these three scenarios, to leverage the full power of collaboration. Project group. It's a set of people coming together, working on an innovation, managing deliverables and tasks. When you think about project groups, these are your product development team working on a feature or a product launch, it's your research and RD working on some innovation there, or a construction site management as a project. Organization groups. This is a group of people that's part of a team in an organization or a department. So, when you think about that, these people are coming together to stay in touch, to coordinate activities, information, and disseminate all of the information that they want to share with the team. The typical examples over there would be your HR group, finance, or a tech group in your company or a team that's working. As an engineering organization. Interest group. 
This is a collection of people who share a common interest. They're building this community to stay in touch with what's latest or greatest going in that community on a given topic, or just keeping the connections. In Microsoft, we have many of these examples, such as homeowners group in Microsoft, where all the homeowners can share, you know, where is the plumber and where is the electrician, and you can get all of that information really quick, quickly from your colleagues. There's tech communities, the gamer communities, media communities. You can create these interest groups, not just within your team, but also sometimes for your organization. What I'm gonna do now is switch over to show you these in demo and walk you through, walk you through these experiences. For the demo today, I'm gonna pretend I work for Contoso. By this time, you probably are very familiar with Contoso, sometimes you even wonder if you work for Contoso or Microsoft, that's a different thing. Um, but yeah, I'm here in Contoso, this is my Contoso mailbox. I'm in my Outlook, we all have a love and a hate relationship with email. We love email because this is the most reliable way to get work done. We hate because we get sometimes a lot of it. Groups is gonna help with some of that. In my inbox, I can get to all my conversations that are directed to me. I also have my groups. And here, I have my project Halo, which is what I'm gonna use as a project group example and show you how we work in the project team. I have my engineering group, group over here, which is an organization group, the team of all the people who make up our engineering organization, and the gaming community, which is an interest group. Let's start with how easy it is to get a group created. All I need to do is go to the new item, press the button, group. I'm gonna create a group for logo design. I need a logo for the new Halo event that's coming in, and I really need to take inputs from rest of the people in my company. So I'm gonna create a group, and I'm gonna keep it public so other people in the company can help participate, the other designers. I could make it private, and I could choose to change these privacies if I want it later. And yes, we didn't have this before. A few months back, we enabled the capability so you can switch between public and private if you choose to decide to do that later. So I'm gonna keep it public and go and create this group. What it is doing is it's calling the Active Directory and setting up an identity for this group so that the rest of the people can discover this. And it's setting up a mailbox. It's setting up the entire office to work on this logo design project. By the time I finish the sentence, it's all ready. We have done a lot of work over here to make this really quick and fast. I'm able to add members that I want to work with me now, give it a description and I have my group ready. It's all setting up, and this is how easy it is for users to get started and organize. So you'll notice I have my logo design Hello Group created over here. So easy, simple, self-service for the end, us end users. I'm gonna switch to my project Halo Group, and the first thing you'll notice is it's one place to get all my conversations. In the past, I, I would have used a distribution list created a project halo at contoso.com, and I would have invited people to participate in the conversations. The nice thing about groups is it brings a shared mailbox. So here I have the project halo, it's a mailbox. When I add somebody new, they have the context of the entire conversations that are going in the group. They don't have to get started from scratch. I don't have to forward emails. You'll notice I have all the conversations here. The group also has calendar, we'll talk about that, files, all the group files are in one place, so you can get to all the files that are connected to this group, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. The group also has a notebook, pre-created. All of us work on project, take notes, meetings, important information. The notebook is really helpful in those scenarios. So you can get to your calendar files and notebook all in one place. The next thing you'll notice is this thing called at sign over here. Lots of conversations are happening in the group. What's nice and about these ad is they're reflecting when somebody needs my attention. These are at mentions. You're pretty familiar with all of these coming from the social networks and how you use the productivity devices every day. So here, I have a conversation going on, and notice how all the emails related to this marketing update are nicely organized. So I can see Chris started the conversation, I replied, Eric replied, Christopher said something, 
And then I replied, and later Krish wanted my attention on something, so he calls my name. Of all these conversations, it's really easy for me to get the attention. So with that, I can bring Christoph, looks good, and I can send this message to him. Really easy to respond. I can write a whole email, send a short message. And when Christoph gets it in his inbox, he will see the at mention, so it's easy for him to triage information. You'll notice there are likes. When you have to respond to a conversation as, I got it, agree. We found it really, really convenient. Our customers are looking at that and saying, that's replacing all of that reply all I would have done or actually not have done because I have fear of spamming people. And now I can simply like a conversation and acknowledge that I like it, plus one, I agree. Really easy to do that right in your experience over here. Let's talk about the scenario where I am working on a document which provides an overview of Halo. And I'm gonna share with the team to get their inputs. All of us start with writing documents on our local machine, C drive. We feel confident. We write the document, get it into a draft state, and then we share. Let's look at how that experience changes when you're working with groups. So here, I have my document, new Halo overview. It's on my C drive. You can see it's in the C Ignite folder over there. I'm gonna to go to my Outlook and start a new conversation. I'm gonna use my attached dialog. Here, you see Office Graph is pulling all the files that I'm working on, including files from my C drive. So here, I have the file. Let's see, if I do a small little change over here and make this save, I go back to my conversation and I should see that my new Halo overview is right here on the top. Not only I can pick that file, which I'll do in a moment, I can browse to all my groups right from this attachment picker. So if I wanted to pick any specific file from Project Halo, I could do that. One click, it connects to my document library, brings all the file, and I can choose any of these files from here. I'm coming back to the scenario. Since I need to send the file that's local on my machine, I'm gonna pick this file. I would have sent this file as an attachment, but I think I can do better than that. I want my team to co-author this document with me. I need their inputs. So I'm gonna go change this attachment and put it directly into my project Halo. And with one click, I'm saving time that I would have done by going to my document library, uploading this document, setting the permissions, taking the URL, and then sending it in an email. One click, it's all part of the conversations now. I'm gonna mention Christoph here so he can help with the review. Can you please review? And let's not send anyway without a subject. Send anyway. So I send it without subject, that's fine. So I sent the email to Christoph with that attachment. Now that's how simple it is in the flow of every day. You're using your email, you're sending your documents, it's all in a place for your group organized. Now many of our users are using web as their primary interface to do their work every day. So let's take a look at how this experience looks in Office 365 web. I'm here switching to my Outlook on the web. I'm in my inbox. Notice, same emails. I have this list of groups that I'm working on, so I have my project Halo group right here. The document that I just sent to the team is right here. So pretend if I was somebody else in the team, I could easily open this document, see the document next to my conversation. I can actually edit and reply this document right from the flow of my conversations. I don't have to leave. I have the context of what this conversation is about. And notice, a draft email is created while I'm editing this document. So let's make some changes. Send a note for the team if I could spell it right. And I'm all done. I didn't have the, to switch the context. Imagine the time save you're doing as you're moving and collaborating on these documents. So here, I have other conversations going too, and notice not all conversations have what we call cloudy files. 
files stored in a document library. So you see this little cloud icon that's representing all these files that are stored in a SharePoint document library. But I also often get files like this, which are attachments. And believe it or not, attachment is still is the number one way people collaborate in 2016, still. So what? We wanted to make that process simple. You could take an attachment and upload that attachment to a group library with one click. But we thought we can do better than that because people are lazy. They're not gonna do that. They're not gonna take an attachment, put it into some document library, and then do that for every process. But we, have, we made the promise that we wanna bring all your group files in one place. You don't have to look for your attachments in your mailbox. Mightly send that attachment to me. Where is that file? Let's go find this information. Oh, that was a cloudy file? Oh, yeah, I'm confused, looking for where the file is. So we are introducing a new view for files in your group that brings all your files in one context. Let's take a look at that. Here, I have that brainstorming file that was an attachment sent to the group. Here, I have that file that I just uploaded, Halo Framing Documents. I have a file that is not in this document library, but shared from other places. You could be using a OneDrive, you could be using another group, simply sharing with this group. All my files are in one place. And if I click on this, I can go back and see the email where this attachment came. Really easy to find all your attachments and your emails connected to that along with all your group files. Isn't that cool? Save time, isn't it? Yeah? Thank you. So let's go back to the conversations. Now, as the team grows, uh, there are needs for team to get a little bit more structure. They're working on different tasks with lots of people in the, in the team. So for our project, we have a planner. Every group gets a planner. A few months back, we launched Microsoft Planner, and every planner is connected to a group. Let me show you how. So here, for Project Halo, I have a planner. When you click on the planner, it provides you a way to organize tasks for all your group members. So for the Project Halo, I have a product backlog, I have a list for the launch, and I have a design backlog. It's really easy for me to move these items from one bucket to other bucket. I can see the progress across all of these tasks, how it's going, and this group, to prove this plan is connected to the same group, you have access to same conversations, calendars, files, notebook, all from the context of your planner. Looks like Maitli here is a little overbooked, so I can look at the task assigned to her, and I can go on one of these branding images and suggest the team, hey, someone from design could help. And I'm sending a note to the team on this task because the whole group is connected. You're working on the same project. When the team receives this message here, they know that I have made the change on the task. Conversation in the plan connects to the conversation with the team. When I go to the plan, I have all of that context. When I create a new plan, I'm creating a new group. So a group, is a plan, group has a plan, and a plan is a group, all connected. Now, I wanna talk about the need where not all the collaboration really happens in the organization boundaries, right? Here, my project Halo, I have the whole team working within uh, my Contoso, and I can bring all the people. But I have a Halo event launch coming, and I need Kelly, who is an ind independent co coordinator, event coordinator, and I need her help to work on this project with me. I don't want to use some non-approved IT tools to send her attachments and files and collaborate. I really want her to be part of the team to work on this project. So I have a Halo event created, a group for this Hello Event project. And I've been talking to my team members about what's, how do we go about it, and it's time that we need to bring Kelly into this. We've been sharing some internal documents as draft proposals of what's going on, so I can see 
the different files that I have right now, we are discussing a launch event plan, and I have a few members over here. So what I really want to do is add Kelly into this group. Notice, Kelly is an independent contractor. She uses Gmail. I could invite, with the guest access that we have enabled in the service, anybody with an email address. Just let it sink. 2.5 billion email addresses. It could be any organization, Office 365, non-Office 365, Microsoft account, non-Microsoft account, Gmail, Yahoo, you can invite any of those people. So I'm taking a totally non-Microsoft so that I can prove my point. I'm gonna add Kelly over here. Notice, it gives me the warning, and we'll talk about what these warnings and controls and administration looks like for guests. There is a dedicated session tomorrow that Sashi is delivering on guests, and you will have all insights of how you manage and control these permissions in your organization. So with one click, I'm gonna save this, and now Kelly is a part of my team. As simple as that. I didn't have to learn any new tool. The way I add new members, I added Kelly. Now, Kelly was nice enough to give me her Gmail account access for this demo, so I'm gonna switch to Kelly's Gmail account here. This is Kelly. Uh, and notice I got a, a welcome email from Amit, Kelly. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is the welcome email is letting Kelly know what this group is about. It's a group where we are talking about the Halo event, and it's sending the information who are the members of this group. Kelly has been working with us, so she's a little familiar about the people, and uh, she knows me. She can start our conversations really quickly with the team right here. Thanks for inviting me, and I am here. Done. Kelly's part of the team. She is participating in conversations with the team. And to prove, let's see. I'll go back to my conversations. Notice, I have the message from Kelly. And this is not some uh, vaporware in the demos. This is going through the transport, Office 365 email delivery, all back and forth from my mailbox in Contoso to Gmail to all the way back over here. So it looks like Kelly is in the group. Let's see if I can share the document that we need help from. So, hey Kay, can you help with review? And let me add the document. It's really easy. I can pick up the document that we've been working for this proposal. Add this. Next. I don't want to send her attachments because I really want to co-author with her so the team can also do this. Let's do that. Notice when I added Kelly, I have a little globe showing up over here. It says it's a private group with guests. So everybody in the team knows that there are external people who are working in this. You see, there is a tool tip, the mail tip over here that shows there are external people. So you can configure these things so that people are aware in your group when there is an external member. So I'm going to send this thing, send this to Kelly, and back again. Let's go to Kelly's uh, computer. Wow, the mail is here from Kelly, uh, from Amit, and Amit is asking me to review this document. Let's see how that's gonna work. So I'm gonna open this document, and ta-da, I'm here, open this document. Now, I was signed in with a Microsoft account as a Kelly over here. If I was not signed in, Kelly would be asked to create her Microsoft account for the very first time, to sign in and all in. So you do a basic auth with credentials, and now from that point onwards, Kelly can be invited to any group in the company, and she'll use the same account ID and password to enter. So here, I am gonna edit this document. Let's edit, this is Kelly, by the way, who is event coordinator, updating this document. Let's call it plan two. And I'm gonna see if I can access other documents as well. So as Kelly, not only I can edit the document, I have access to all the documents that I need to work with this team. So notice, this is Kelly updating the document, and all of the documents are available over here. She has access to all of those files, not just the files, but also the team notebook. So she can really be part of the team and work with all of us. Simple as that. So what I just showed you over here, I invited somebody totally outside my company, was able to have conversations, have Kelly participate, be able to share a document, co-author the document, 
all in few clicks. That's how easy it is to bring people inside and outside your organization. With that, we're going to move to the. We're going to thank you. With that, we are going to move to the next scenario, and I'm going to hand off to Christoph. So the next two scenario we're going to be uh, talking about is again how can you use group in the context of an organization, large and small, whether it's your direct report or whether it's a large business unit with hundreds of of employees. And then the second one will be uh, using groups for a community of interest. So here in this case, still at Contoso, we do have a great engineering team, and again we've demoed some of the capabilities around conversations. Now as a team, one of the things we need, in addition to conversation, we need to get organized around people, around content, and as any team of any sizes, we do have some process internally, especially an engineering team. So what I'm going to do here, notice a little tab here um, in our demo tenant, and I'm going to click on it, and what this is going to launch is a full-blown SharePoint team site. What you're getting a peek at is something we've announced at the end of August that we started rolling out to first release customers. You're looking at a beautiful SharePoint team site that we have for our team. And you know, I'm not going to give you a full overview of, of SharePoint, but you see how it's got recent activity, it's got that beautiful look and feel um, that the team needs. Now, a couple things that our team is using SharePoint for is obviously there's key things that our, our engineering team needs. You know, the first tab is monthly active users and daily active users. We track those very carefully. How is our products doing? Are customers using in day, day in, day out? One other thing that SharePoint uh, provides to the team is the ability to track an inventory of all the hardware that we've got for the team. And here with the power of, of SharePoint and Flow, what we've done, for instance, is create a new uh, a, a quick process to track devices that we have for engineering to test. I'm not going to fill the field, but you get the idea. I saved this. And, and voila, so any engineer can consult the official list of hardware that's available and go bore it. If I, um, it'll take a couple seconds, but basically there's a message thanks to Flow that's going to come in the team inbox. So everyone's notified, hey, we got new hardware for you to test your, uh, the, the great services you're working on. Here you go, voila. So that's full-blown team side for a team to, again, get more organized around people, content, and processes. The next thing a good team needs is how do we stay in touch around key milestones, key events? And one of the things that customers love about groups is this notion of a shared calendar. What you're looking at here in blue is my work calendar, and in green, is the engineering team's calendar. So let me simplify this view a little bit. We'll just pick one day. And again, I can disable things here. And you can see oh, we've got a sprint review going on. But what I want to highlight, it's very easy to create a new event. So let's pretend we're at Ignite this week. And maybe we want to do a debrief with the team. I got a couple options. You see here, it's going to put an entry in the engineering shared calendar versus my calendar. One thing that you guys have been asking us is some of those events, maybe a daily stand-ups, we don't want to send a notification to every time, every, uh, or every event every time. I can throttle the notification. So in this case, maybe I don't want to send an invitation, and you know, I can control that. I guess, again, that's direct customer feedback that we get from you guys that we just delivered uh, a couple months ago. So I can just schedule this meeting, and voila, you know, I've got the in-night debrief that anyone in the team can join when they're ready. That's a shared calendar. Now let's show you then the next thing that a team might do on a regular basis, which is uh, join meetings. In this case, being the end of the month, we do have a sprint review. So the team is, um, let me join meeting if I can. OK, I'll do it from the Skype call. Maybe not so much. Control, click. OK. So again, we've talked in the introduction how groups enables you to move from task to task. So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm joining on this device that Sprint meeting. You can see it's launching. In this case, I've got uh, Skype for Business installed on this desktop. But it could have been Skype for Business or whatever device I got in my hand. 
Uh, it looks like the engineering team is busy because I'm only one on the call, but that's okay. And then suddenly, like any good uh, team lead, what I'm going to do is capture notes. And in Skype, I can easily bring share notes. And guess what this is going to do? It's going to bring up the um, share notebook that comes with every group so we can easily document all the decisions and key uh, talking points about this meeting. Again, what I'm showing you is this notion that I can move from task to task and not lose context as I'm going about doing my business, in this case, um, working with my peers uh, as part of an organization. Now, I'd switch to the next part. So I'll show you how an organization group can work. The next thing I want to show you is um, a community of interest. So let me close Skype for Business. And let's go back to um, this view. Now, a common thing that customers have been asking is either I'm a new hire or even for long time hires, how do I discover that, that new groups and new project that is relevant to me? And there's a couple of ways to do that. Um, one way is to proactively look for it. And I can do that. You know, I can search gaming. And one of the new features. Actually, let me step back. I'm going a little too fast. So let me search for gaming. Here I'm in a group. I'm going to type gaming, if I can type. OK. So I can search, in this case, by default, it's going to search uh, this group. But notice here, I'm going to click on public group. And what it does, it's searching all the groups that are available in my organization. It looks like it's. Um, Taking a couple seconds. Let's refresh one more time. If not, we'll move on. Let's type gaming one more time. Public group. OK. So here, what it does, it queried all those groups that I've got access to. And it's returning information. So I can start browsing. It looks like there's different things that look of interest. It looks like this group, um, this gaming community, really sounds interesting. One thing I can do, I can quickly over that name, and I can get some specific information about this group. You know, I can look at what's going on. It just looks like, you know, all about indie games. It looks like that, that's my kind of uh, expertise, and I definitely want to join that group. And I can quickly join, and voila, in seconds, suddenly I'm part of the team, and I can see what's going on with this group day in, day out. Now, one thing you'll notice about this group, it's got this notion of what we call connectors. You can see this group, because being a, a group dedicated for uh, indie games, it already has, um, on a daily basis, created news about this specific topic. It also has a notion of all the tweets that have a specific hashtag. How does that happen? Well, guess what? A couple of months ago, we've delivered this notion of Microsoft connectors. And that's what you see in the upper right corner. That's all available in production today. There's about 100 connectors available. And I've just shown you two out of 100. You can obviously map more uh, business-specific line of business app, whether it's GitHub or, or some uh, ticketing systems, et cetera, et cetera. Or even better, you can build your own connector. But again, it's a great value to bring in some of the key information happening on the ad side, and I can start discussions or directly interact with those groups across my organization. For instance, I could say, you know, Project Halo, you might want to check this for some important news. So that's the, uh, that's the connector that's available in every group. The last thing I want to show you is, again, a very common use case that customers have been asking. OK, I can search for gaming if I know what to search and if I can type, unlike myself earlier. But couldn't we leverage the Microsoft Graph to have recommendation based on what we're working on, and more importantly, what our peers are working on? And that, that's, that's what I just did. I hit that Discover button. It's leveraging that intelligence that constantly look at what's going on in organizations. And it's making recommendation of what matters to me based on who I'm working with. And again, it's another way to get at the same information. And maybe I can say this software development team looks like a great group to join to up my uh, coding skills. And voila, again, in seconds, I've been plugged into a key group that matters to me. Now, with that, you know, we've done demos on desktop on browser. There's one key element that we want to cover, and that's mobile. So let's switch to mobile. Thanks, Christoph. So we really can't 
claim to have a great productivity experience without having a great mobile. You've heard Satya say, we are cloud first, mobile first company. Let me show you how you can experience and get to all your groups using your mobile device. Here, I'm using Outlook Groups app. It's available, we, we launched this one last year, and since then we've been constantly improving, and I'll show you some of those key updates recently done to this app. So with one click, I can get in my app, see all the groups that matter to me. I have my gaming community, I have my engineering group, I have the project Halo. I created this Halo event group over here. I can manage how, what's important to me here, so I'm gonna favorite this group. And when I favorite it, it shows up in my favorite list. It roams across my devices, so it's gonna favorite inside Outlook as well, so I can quickly see there. Notice the conversations are based, the listing of groups is based on recency, so these moves, and it's quickly, it's really easy for me to see when there is an activity happening in a group. So I'm gonna switch into Hello event group over here. This is where we recently exchanged some emails with Kelly, who was working on the document. I have access to all my conversations over here. I can get to all my files that are connected to this group, so the Halo, Halo launch event plan that we shared with Kelly is also here. I can get to my notebook. I can go back, click on the document that has been discussed over here in this context, and open this document. If my Wi-Fi on this phone continues to work, one of the things we have heard as feedback from customers is they really wanted to bring their calendar along with their, all the information about the group. So we added calendars so you can get to all of the activities, all of the events that are happening in this group. Let me try to kill this app and see if I can get the internet to pick this one up again. Let's go to the Halo event group over here. I have my conversations going here. I have files, and let's see if I can get my calendar to show up as well. So I'll ha I, should have, I should see all my relevant calendar events to this group. I can also go to see the notifications that are coming from different groups. So all the conversations that are about where I'm at mentioned. So we talked about how at mentions helps me get the attention on any conversation happening across the groups. So I can quickly see that. And notice that Christophe mentioned and liked the post, Sarah liked the post, all of those things, and I can dive into one of those conversations directly from this place, so I have access to that conversation as well. And I can get back to my group as well. Discovery tab lets me see all the groups that I'm part of, or the groups that I that are relevant to me that I should be joining. So these are really the ones that Graph is telling and the Christoph showed up as discovery experience. And I can also control how I go on to get notified for each of these groups. So if some group is really relevant to you, you can actually turn the push notifications on on that. So that's on mobile. We've also heard from our teachers, from a lot of you in this room, that you wanted to see this experience on iPad. I saw a lot of people picking up iPad to take pictures over here. So you're carrying that device as your productivity, as your main productivity uh, device on the go, and you wanted the capability of groups to be there so you can actually work on the go. So last week, we introduced iPad app for the groups. Here, I have the same list of groups with me. I see my project Halo Engineering Ignite 2016 groups right here. I can go to my Hello Event group. This is where the conversation that I just had with Kelly is right in place. I can bring the document that we shared with Kelly earlier. She made the changes to plan two. Let's make it plan three. This is a full blown iPad app, not just an iPhone app that is built for iPad. So to prove it, let's see what we have done to, see, to do multitasking on this. So I can go back to my conversation that I was having with Kelly, make changes over here, go back to my conversation, changes done, post back this conversation. I'm working on my document, I'm having conversations. Back to my app. I can get into my group app, I can see all the events that are related to this event. Notice, all my events are showing up over here. I can get to my notebook. 
one click. I can launch that, bring that in the context. Again, have my conversations and notebook together while working on this group. And it's a full app, so you have the same notifications that, we, that I showed you earlier. You have access to the discovery, and you have all of the information that you need to get your groups on the go. It's an iPad app available in the App Store. If you have one, you can download. I just showed you iOS app just on the iPhone. The apps are available for Windows as well as Android. If you, don't, if you want to try these things, come over to the booth and experience all of these devices. With that, I'm going to hand it over to Christoph. Thanks, Amit. So hopefully we got you um, excited and give you color of, of some of the use cases and some of the scenarios uh, to collaborate thanks to Office 365 groups. It's a couple of slides to recap what we showed you. I'm going to go pretty fast, but again, you know, you can use project, you can reuse group for project work, and we've highlighted how we made conversation modern, how we can really help you with files, and how you can up your game either using Planner to organize work, and more importantly, bring uh, outsiders in your project to get work done. With cover organization group, you know, add that engineering team, large and small, your direct report, I can use a shared calendar, how you can use um, uh, SharePoint to drive processes and capture additional information, et cetera, et cetera. And last but not least, you know, I covered in this notion of interest group, how you can use connectors and how you can um, you know, discover groups that are relevant to you or search groups across your organization. Now let's switch gear and talk administration. Again, knowing Ignite, knowing you guys, you probably a lot of you are in IT. So there's three key things I'll cover. First of all, I'll cover the ins and outs of administration at a high level. Then I'll talk about extensibility of groups, and then I'll wrap up with a how do I get there, um, either from um, distribution groups or I'll give you quick pointers if you're on premises as well. So I start with the first section. You know, again, we've been on this journey. We've been in production for over two years. You know, we got millions of users, and we've been listening on feedback, and we've been delivering features after features. This single slide doesn't do justice to all the things we've delivered, but let me hit a couple high-level uh, high points that you guys care about uh, from an admin perspective. First of all, let me remind again, Office 365 groups at the end of the day are Azure Active Directory objects. What's the beauty? What's in it for you as admins? Means you got a central location to manage groups. You got a central location to see what's going on. You can use PowerShell if that's your cup of tea. You can use the admin centers. You can use the mobile app. You can use the UI. Whatever is your flavor, you can manage groups uh, from different endpoints. Can you easy configure dynamic membership? Yes, I'll give you a glimpse. And that's, the, that's one of the demo I'll be doing later. And then we delivered that back in February. And by the way, on the dynamic membership, one thing I want to stress, especially folks that are using SharePoint, that the notion of dynamic membership, where you can create a team or membership based on AAD attributes, the beauty here is then that applies to SharePoint. Again, we give you a peek that every team site gets a group. Guess what? If you want a team site, like I said, an intranet for a team, and you don't want someone to be managing who's in, who's out, Guess what? By being mapped to groups, you configure dynamic membership, and the same applies to the membership and the permissioning on your team site. Next thing we've done is that a lot of you have been asking is, hey, okay, great. I get that it's self-service and easy to create. I get the value, but I still don't trust my user on day zero. So can, you, can we control before we go do a big bang on control who gets access, who gets to control, uh, who gets to control groups? And yes, you can do that. Absolutely, you can control who gets to control groups at the individual level or at the security group level. Typically, and you can implement naming policies if you like. The one warning that I want to challenge all of you, sure, you can turn everything off and control it, but remember, there was a survey three years ago, 85% of employees admitted to using non-approved IT, a non-approved IT application. So the harder you're making it for the users to collaborate, you know what users are going to be. Very patient is, is whatever. It only takes seconds to create a group in Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. So if you put the bar too high, you're going to lose that user. So think really hard before you implement those restrictions on, on group creation. The other thing that we've implemented that a lot of you have asked, whether you're regulated in a rec regulatory industry or even in education, is, OK, sure, people can create groups, but let's put some boundaries on remind Christoph, because Christoph is human. He's not perfect. Remind Christoph how you should be using this group and how you shouldn't. 
So we've implemented usage guidelines and data classification. I'll be showing you that. And like Ahmed was showing, for instance, us and Microsoft, yes, we can use Office 365 groups to, to collaborate on highly sensitive project. And the only requirement, it needs to be private. Because it's highly sensitive, potentially has financial data, customer data, and it has to be private. But it's OK. So you can implement that with data classification. And then last but not least, that kind of catchy bullet, yes, we've implemented reporting, whether you want to do an audit log, which is the most granular level. Or this afternoon, we'll show you how we're going to be get ready to deliver a usage report so that at any point in time, UIT, you're in the control tower, and you can see what's going on. And if you see that that guy, Kristoff, has created yet another marketing group, maybe you have to talk to his manager or remind Kristoff, why do you need 10 marketing groups? Maybe you can consolidate. And there's a catch, a catch line there. There is more. And I'm definitely going to do a shameless plug for a session uh, two of our colleagues, Vince and Eric, are going to be doing at 2.15 in this exact room Well, they go a deep dive, they'll show plenty of PowerShell, and they'll talk about some of the upcoming features that we're working on that are going to delight all of you as administrators. There's another session also tomorrow morning where, in this case, instead of just pitching it to you, we are bringing on stage two esteem MVPs, Tony Renman and Benjamin Yolan, Exchange MVP and a SharePoint MVP, to talk about you know, their best practices from the trenches on deploying and, and driving usage of groups at customers. So shameless plug for two sessions that you had to attend if you're an administrator. Now, we haven't stopped there. The other question is, can I extend groups with my line of business application? Absolutely. And November last year, so almost a year ago, we shipped the Microsoft Graph. Do we have API for groups, REST API, and methods to create groups, to manipulate members, to inject messages, to manipulate files, to manipulate tasks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So there's a link there. Highly encourage all of you, if you're an ISV, third party uh, software development shop, to look at it. Potentially, you can bridge your app or leverage groups. So, again, this is not a developer session. One, um, another point I want to make is same thing with the connectors. We've got about 100 connectors available. If the one, the line of business app is not listed there, can you build your own connectors? Absolutely. We've got a framework for you. And that's also going to be a plug to a session on Friday that'll walk you through building your own connectors and all the things we've done since we've announced connectors at uh, the Build Conference uh, last April. And that leads me to the last topic before I go to uh, demos, which is, OK, great. I get groups is the future for group collaborations, but I'm not quite there. Either I'm on-premises, or I'm using public folders, or distribution lists, or I have an existing team site, or existing Yammer group. How do I get there? Now, this is obviously a lengthy topic, but at the high level, one point I want to make loud and clear, we think group, and in particular the conversation engine that emit demoed across Outlook, across mobile, we think that's the future, and we don't recommend using distribution lists anymore. Now, we're not saying groups are going to address all the use case that you need in your organization, but we think the bulk of how DLs are used today could potentially be replaced with groups. And to make that life easier, to convert a distribution list to a group, we've introduced like a one-click upgrade via the Exchange Admin Centers. And since I know you're all admin administrators, you probably like scripts, so you probably want to automate that using PowerShell. We've delivered scripts for that. And then we also listen. You, we know that a lot of you are hybrid, and you potentially still have some uh, distribution lists or distribution groups on premises. We also have a script to, to migrate those on premises DL to the cloud. And last but not least, we also know that a lot of you um, might still have an exchange box, one or two, through acquisitions or regulatory that's still sitting under someone's desk and where you have a couple of mailboxes on premises. And we also delivered about six months ago the guidance on how to configure those folks, those mailboxes are on prem to work with an Office 365 group that is in the cloud. So again, a lot of guidance. We do have a dedicated session on how to migrate uh, DL to groups um, later on this week. So that leads me to a couple admin demos to illustrate some of the key points I was making earlier. So again, here what you're looking at is the Office 365 admin centers. And I'm going to go straight to the Groups tab here. And you're going to see, again, all the groups that are created in this beautiful demo tenant uh, from Contoso. 
And for instance, we'll pick the first one, big wigs. That sounds interesting. And again, you can see the groups. I can delete the group. I can edit members. Again, you as the administrator, so you have a central location, and at any point in time, you can step in if needed. Now, I'm not going to do that for this group. The next thing I'm going to show you is how about some of those governance to really help you with managing groups. And so here, I'm going back to that engineering group that I had earlier. There's a couple things that we've delivered that I didn't cover early. Notice how next to the name, I get this medium thing. What is this? Well, this is data classification that I talked about er earlier. So I can edit group, and as a group owner, I can modify that. So data classification, we know that there's no such thing as one type of classification. So guess what? It's a framework. You enter via PowerShell. Is there a three-tier classification, a five-level, a one-level, whatever you want? In this case, I just picked three because it makes sense, and we can flip this one to high. The other thing we've delivered, again, to remember, to remind the owners, since we all, again, can make mistakes, what are the rules of engagement? So we've enabled you to configure a group usage guideline. So I get this link as a group owner. I see the same link when I, uh, when I create the group, and I can click on it. In this case, I did a shameless plug to all the documentation we got about groups. But think of potentially you'll map that to the URL of your own internal HR policies to remind Christoph. Here is the rule of engagement on, you know, the based on the classification, what you should do and not do, and what you should think about. Again, to avoid um, getting in trouble. Last thing I want to show you here is again something all of you have asked us: is give me the ability to flip from private to public, on and off, forever. And again, it's very easy. Maybe I create a group public, and suddenly this project becomes super hush hush, and I'm sharing customer information. So I definitely need to abide by my classification. Uh, need to uh, switch it to, uh, to private. So I can easily do that. Now let's show you now how does this look from an Azure Active Directory perspective. And I'll show you two th quick things. So again, I go in groups. Here I'm in the uh, micro, uh, Azure AD portal on the web. And I'll show you two quick things. How can I flip a groups from, um, to be uh, based on dynamic membership? So I can do this. For instance, I pick the big wigs, and it's as easy as one click. I go to configure. I click yes, dynamic membership, voila. And I can pick any attributes that's available in AD. And you know, I can click blah, blah, blah. And I can save, and voila. In seconds, it's going to query all the objects, all those users, look for that property, match it. In this case, it's just one Boolean, but I could be very granular and have anyone in billing, one who's part of the marketing team, who's reporting to emit, and voila, suddenly automatically in real time, membership is defined. The next thing I'll show you with uh, that you get access in AD is what I mentioned earlier. At any point in time, we want you, Mr. Administrator, to see what's going on. I don't know if you're familiar with Azure AD, but a popular report is called the Audit Report. It's a very chatty report, but at the most granular level, it gives you all the circadian activities of groups. You can see here a group was created. The group, you know, if I met, I, he created a group. If you added someone, if you deleted a group, I get all that information as an administrator, and maybe, you know, that will drive, um, you know, oops, not this. Sorry. I can click on details, and you know, I can get additional information on what changes. Again, the idea is at any point in time, uh, you're in control. Last thing I want to show you, actually, there's two more things I want to show you. One thing that I forgot to uh, show you, remember I was in the gaming group, and there was a lot of uh, messages because connectors were configured. One thing you've all have asked us to deliver is this little button, group email settings. What this does is enables you to configure notification to your preference. So for instance, the gaming community is gone, might be very chatty. I don't want an email in my inbox. I want to keep it dedicated for that group immersive experience. Whereas maybe the team, my direct report, I want to make sure I don't miss a beat, whether it's a meeting, an email, whatever. I want that in my inbox. So again, at the group level, for each of you, you can configure how you get notified uh, with all those messages. OK. Last thing I want to show you is how easy it is to upgrade a group, uh, a distribution group to uh, Office 365 groups. So here I'm in the Exchange Admin Center. I'm going to click on the distribution group, think finance team, and there's one little button right here. A little hard to see, but let me make it very clear here. You get that. 
And voila, are you sure you want to do it? Absolutely. I want my finance team to enter the 21st century. I'm not going to wait. It takes a couple seconds, but you get the ID. Okay, one more demo because this is Ignite, and hopefully you heard one important announcement yesterday. We announced that, yes, Yammer will integrate with Office 365 Group. I switch to Yammer. I'm going to create Atlanta Community. And I'm just going to add emit. If I can type again, too much coffee this morning. I'm going to hit create group. You might say, Christoph, that doesn't look different, right? I could do that before. Absolutely. Let's go back to the admin center and let's refresh this view. It's all running in production, by the way. We have a special tenant. It's not flooded to your tenant yet, but it's coming soon as we announced yesterday in the blog post. Drum roll. Here we go. Same group, created in Yammer. And now let's go back here. Look. In seconds, I create a group, centrally managed, I get a full team site. Now let's switch back to Amit to talk about roadmap. Okay, we are into the last section. I hope by this time you get that Office 365 Groups is the fabric that's connecting your team with a collaboration experience that spans all the workloads. You saw that in Outlook. You saw how it's connected to your files, how it's connected to SharePoint. You saw how it's connected to Yammer. You saw how it's connected to Skype. Your team can move across these things and still keep that identity, Project Halo, engineering team, or whatever it is, and work across Office. Office understands your team. So there is a lot of stuff that we are working on on our roadmap. I'm not, this is not a comprehensive roadmap, but I wanted to pick three things that's top of mind for most of you. And a lot of this information has already been disseminated yesterday in the keynotes. So let's start with Yammer. So you just saw the demo. Yammer is now connected to Office 65 groups. So when you create a group in Yammer, it creates an Office 365 group. And you saw everything that you could do with it, so I don't have to explain each of those pieces again. So you, now you have access to your SharePoint, Notebook, and more. You are managing that group centrally in your Azure Active Directory portal, just like any other group, because it is the same group. We are in the process of rolling that functionality out, so if, you are Yammer, if your tenant is connected to Office 365 identity with Yammer, you will be the first one to receive that functionality. SharePoint. There was a big announcement a few weeks back, and yesterday we did a lot of sharing during the Jeff Deeper session. SharePoint provides the modern team sites for every group. So every group in your tenant now has a site. So if your team chooses to organize content and have a rich experience with libraries, lists, and pages that they want to use for their project, they can now do that with a sites link connected to their group. More than that, now when you go and create a modern team site in SharePoint, it connects to a group. Remember, that picture a little over there, if you can get that, a group and a SharePoint team site, they're mapped to each other. So you create one, you get the other one, regardless of which direction you start from. And SharePoint also launched a mobile app, so you can actually access all of the content of SharePoint site on the go. This is also in the process of rolling out, and you'll see over the next few weeks coming to your tenants. Outlook, you saw how much work we are doing to transform mail for your teamwork. It's really easy to access all your group's conversations and all the information related to the group right from the context of what, where you spend a lot of your time, the thing that you rely to get work done. We want to bring that experience on all Outlook endpoint, and we know, we have heard, Mac is one missing piece. We are actively developing on Mac to bring the group's experience there. You will see. We, we take the files experience that I show you a glimpse of that on the web to bring all your files really easily across all Outlook experiences. We are enriching the search experience so you can find all of that information when you need it. And with all of that information coming in, we want to give you better triage tools so you can control the notification based on your preferences for the group. A lot is happening across groups. This is not comprehensive. Definitely, if you have more questions, you come by our booth and talk about it. 
We have delivered a lot of these improvements based on your feedback, your usage, you're telling us, and you're probably seeing a lot of those reflected over here, whether it is the, the guest experience, which is a big deal for a lot of you, the iPad app, the improvements with Planner on the administration side. Christoph showed you some stuff. There's a whole session on that. Let me call a couple of things on the administration roadmap uh, that's really important and top of mind for us, and I know it's all coming from your feedback, soft delete. We are working and we are pretty close to delivering the solution by the end of this year. So soft delete, so you can delete a group and then retrieve it back. Ability to preserve and delete the content, retention policies, in other words, is also coming in. You'll see a glimpse of some of that in the Eric session at 2.15 today. So if you are interested in all of the admin capabilities that are listed, that has been delivered over the last year, as well as the ones that are coming, please go attend the session at 2.15. It's actually in this room. With that, I'm going to hand it off to Christoph to wrap up. Thanks, Amit. So hopefully we get you fired up about what's coming and, and, the, and the value. One question we get quite often is, OK, Christoph, I get it. But how do we get started? How do we crawl, walk, run? And in case you haven't heard you know, across Office 365, this is not group specific, but we've learned from you guys that it's not just about shipping great technologies and driving innovation to drive value at our organization. A, Microsoft, help us on that journey. There's a big cultural shift. There's a, lot, there's a lot of habits that we need to change. So what have you learned with your millions of customers running 365 that potentially we can leverage to go on that journey? And that's what Fast Track is all about. So there's definitely a dedicated session on Fast Track, and it can help you with onboarding. And by the way, Fast Track, it's not a taboo. You all have access to it at no additional cost. One of the things that Fast Track gives you is a lot of content to help you get started, in this case, using Group. This URL that you got on the right-hand side is targeted at an end user. How do we teach Christoph how to use a share calendar to schedule out of office, to schedule a meeting? Again, it might sound mundane, but maybe for a lot of your users, this is a big shift on maybe how they work in the past. So again, we've been listening, and we got a ton of content to help you drive usage on adoption at your organization. So definitely, I want you to leverage Fast Track to, again, get value out of groups and the rest of the Office 365 suite. Now, obviously, like I said in the introduction, you know, this is an overview session, and there's a lot more content. This is an exhaustive list of all the sessions. We already done some shameless plug. Whether it's sessions today, it's actually a great. If you're a university or K-12, it's a uh, dedicated how to use groups in education, for instance, at 12.15, um, at something. Uh, we got more tomorrow. We got more Thursday. And then we're going to close the week with a ask me anything about groups. So again, shameless plug. If, all, if you religiously attended all those sessions and you still ask questions, and you still didn't get your answers, come to that session that we'll be delivering on Friday morning. And last but not least, we do mean it. We brought a lot of our peers from Seattle, folks that are working on groups day in, day out, that are very passionate about that. So please come by the booth and ask questions. All the questions are good. And you know, get demos, et cetera, et cetera. So with that, what have we learned today? Again, to recap, I start with the notion of why. What's going on in the world of collaborations? And this notion that we don't think one size fits all to get work done as a team. Whether it's a team working on a project, whether it's a team team, an organizational based team, or whether it's a community of interest. Then we've talked about how we're doing a ton of investment to really make you guys, as IT administrators, the hero, always in control, to abide by governance, policies, et cetera, et cetera. Again, the three things we want to do we want you to do is hopefully absorb as much content as you can this week. And yes, all the content is recorded and our deck is available, et cetera, et cetera. But then we want, when you go back to your office, ask yourself, do I still need yet another DL? Is it not a time to join to the 21st century? Should I migrate that finance team? Should I you know, give a modern team site uh, to this new project that's created? Should I leverage guest access on and on? And the last point, we do really, really mean it. Give us feedback. You know, we're learning every day based on usage data, but that's also why it's so much fun to be here, to hear firsthand what's working, not working. What can we do to improve your life and your user life at your respective organization, large and small, wherever you are? 
With that, I want to close this and thank you, all of you, for attending our sessions. Have a wonderful week in Atlanta. Thank you. Thank you.